I got this piece of 18 karat gold from an old broken necklace that was melted down, and today I'm going to show you how to refine this into 24 karat 100% gold. 18 karat gold is a 3 to 1 alloy of gold and silver, and this is done by jewelry makers to increase durability. The silver can only be removed chemically, and to do that I need to dissolve the piece in acid. Only problem is, gold is really chemically resistant and impervious to all acids, and the only way to dissolve it is by mixing hydrochloric acid with a bit of nitric acid. This produces a solution called aqua regia, which is able to dissolve the gold in a two-step reaction. In the first step, nitric acid reacts with the gold to form gold-1 nitrate, which is incredibly unstable and immediately decomposes back into gold metal. However, in the presence of hydrochloric acid, a second reaction can take place where the gold nitrate can react with four units of hydrochloric acid to form chlorouric acid. Chlorouric acid puts gold in its plus three oxidation state, which is much more stable. While this is going on, silver is also being reacted by the nitric acid into silver nitrate, which then immediately reacts with the hydrochloric acid to form silver chloride, which is an insoluble salt, and really easy to filter off. With that said, once my gold is completely done dissolving, I pass the solution through a Buchner funnel to remove the insoluble silver chloride and leave me with pure chlorouric acid. One quick thing to keep in mind is that chlorouric acid is actually very volatile, so if you boil the solution too hard, you can actually evaporate your gold as crazy as that sounds. In any case, to begin processing my chlorouric acid back to metallic gold, I start by adding a strong solution of urea to it which will neutralize any residual nitric acid. I then transfer my beaker to a fume hood and slowly add a saturated solution of sodium metabasulfite which is going to reduce the chlorouric acid back to metallic gold. This results in an immediate and kind of interesting color change as the gold is precipitated out as an extremely fine powder. Keep in mind that it's important to do this step under a fume hood as the reaction between the leftover acid and sodium metabasulfite will produce dangerous sulfur dioxide gases. And with that, this step is done, and I let my beaker sit for an hour to allow my gold to settle to the bottom, which, again, looks kind of like mud. To collect my gold powder, I take my Buchner funnel back out and pass it through, making sure to get every last speck. This stuff is expensive, and I don't want any going to waste. The filter paper is then transferred to a vacuum desiccator where it's dried under low heat in a vacuum for about two hours, and at that point I'm left with a pure, clean, 100% gold powder. Now that I have my pure gold powder, all that's left to do is to melt it down into something that's more, you know, difficult for me to lose, and to do that I just blast it with a propane torch for about five minutes. The liquid gold is allowed to cool for a while, and the resulting product is upwards of 99.99% pure. This extreme level of purity isn't ideal for jewelry, as pure gold is kind of soft, and the resulting product would kind of deform too easily. However, for chemistry, I want it to be as pure as possible. On that note, my final yield was 3.287 grams, which is a 99.6% yield. As I've said before, I typically don't bother trying to get high yields on this channel because I'm doing it for fun, but this amount of gold is worth $208 at current market value, so I wanted to get all that I could out of it. In any case, I hope you found this interesting, or at least informative, and if you'd like to see more science, consider giving me a follow.